My name is Claire Ayers. I run cross country and track and field. And I just graduated with my physiology degree and I'm going back for fifth year to earn my uh, grad certificate in anatomy. I want to um, go into the medical field. I'm currently applying to med school right now. Um, and then I wanted to compete for a fifth year, so I looked at my options for schooling and they have a certificate program for anatomy. I'm here with Rachel and Anne's, and we have a six mile tempo today. Um, and we start out around 6.30 pace and we cut down to 6.10. So, yeah, that's what we're doing today. Two mile cool down. Go dogs. All right, so that was it for today. Um, we got 11 miles with warm up and cool down included. Um, and yeah, feeling pretty good. Um, it was tough, but we got through it. And so now we're gonna go home, uh, make some breakfast, and then go to work. After our run, I usually go and make myself some food. Um, in the morning, it's usually like eggs and toast or hash browns or something like that. And um, coffee, because I <laughs> I um, have a coffee dependency now. So we got frozen tater tots, eggs, and half an avocado with Everything but the bagel seasoning. <laughs> for our work, we um, work for a landlord and we fix up houses and get them ready for the next tenants. And so we're at this house um, painting and cleaning. We're gonna head to Waits. Um, we're here for about seven hours, and then um, we'll go home, make dinner, and call it a day. <laughs> The hardest part was definitely coming in and balancing athletics and academics right away. Um, but once I got a hang of that, it was fine. It was just a lot of studying and traveling, just figuring out how to balance that. But um, once you get like a system down, um, it's fine. She's driven. I think we know that. Um based on this test alone, like <laughs> she's putting some pressure on herself to do well, which I actually respect that a lot. I'd prefer someone to actually care than not at all. Um, so like from that side of things, she takes it very seriously. I respect it a lot. Like she does a really good job of taking care of the academics and you know that when she gets out of here, she's gonna be successful. Claire's just a workhorse. Like she works hard in everything she does and um, I would hope that that quality rubs off on me. Claire's a tough and resilient individual and it shows in all that she does and puts the work into and um, in mostly everything she gets what she wants. Like she was gonna podium and she podiumed. Like it's just, that's a great teammate to have and she is just is a great teammate. In the fall, we will have our practices at 6 a.m. in the morning and then um, I will go to class. We'll be in the cadaver lab. Um, and then we'll, in the afternoons, either have drills or we'll, we'll have a lift. So we'll do that in the afternoon. And then um, come back and make dinner and go to sleep and do it again.
We're just on our way to class right now. Um, we have a cadaver lab, one to four. So just heading over to Lindegren. <laughs> Today we're going over the axillary region, just a fancy way of saying armpit. Um, and then we're just dissecting all of the nerves and arteries. And yeah, that's what we do. <laughs> This is where we're gonna head in. Um, all of the cadavers are um, confidential, so can't go inside, but yeah, this is where we have class. So a little update from last time, I retook my MCAT. The MCAT is the entrance exam into medical school, um, and I did better this time and I applied to a few schools. I've heard back from a few and I've interviewed at one and I got accepted, which is super exciting, but I'm waiting to hear back from a few more. I think throughout the years, what I've learned from racing and being a student athlete is that uh, you'll fail in life many times, um, whether it's in a race or in a class on a test, but it just depends on your outlook on it. and. Um, how you choose to move on from your mistakes and learn from them. You can use them to in the future and it's all um, makes it so much sweeter whenever you do succeed and you get over the obstacles in pursuing what you truly want to do. Tony. I'm from Melbourne, Australia. I grew up in a small country town called Kyabram, which is um, two hours north of Melbourne, and come from a town about of 8,000. I'm a junior in the classroom, and then I'm a sophomore in the field. My major is the sports administration and management. Um, I'm doing that because I've got the potential to go into the sports agency field, so it's good to relate with sport because that's what I want to do in the long run. And um, yeah, that's why I chose it. I'm Nathan Tawney, I'm on the football team. 6 a.m. and we're getting ready for practice OTAs. I've been playing football for one full year now, about to hit my second season ever, so it's a bit different than everyone else, but it is what it is. Yeah, it's interesting. A lot of us Australians, it's our first time when we come over, it's our first time playing American football, wearing the pads and helmet, which is, um, and getting nerve wracking, but it's exciting. I mean, he's a really positive person, so I feel like each day, like, feed off that energy, because obviously there's days where, like, maybe, like, school or football isn't going too well, and, like, he just has a really good positive energy that you can feed off of. I never knew that kids from Australia came over and punted. I didn't know a lot of them did anyways, but it, it opened my eyes to people come all the way across the world to play this game, and I got lucky enough to meet Nate, so. I'm, I'm grateful for that. A lot of Australians playing Aussie rules, they have sort of a bent leg 
leg swing. Nathan's one of the few guys that has a really nice, flowing, powerful leg swing. And so those guys can get up to speed and learn this game very quickly. And once they learn the terminology that the coaches are talking about, uh, they become a very uh, valued asset. Uh, the good thing about Nathan is he doesn't really have an ego about his average or any of that sort of stuff. So, you know, if he's required to hit a 30-yard punt to help his football team, then he'll do that inside the 20. And then when they need him to bang one of those long spirals, he's got that in his bag as well. So, uh, plus he's a pretty humble guy. You know, he's a country guy from Victoria, Australia, and I think uh, that really helps him fit in here in Carpenter. Back home, surprisingly, like, I struggled with confidence a fair bit and stuff, and then um, that's really built up here. I also struggle with like public speaking. I've helped, that's like helped a lot too. Like I'm more comfortable and I'm more confident in myself. And moving overseas, like I've never been overseas, and all of a sudden I'm like, all right, I'm moving overseas. So what else? See what else is out there. So after doing this experience, like I'm ready to move anywhere. I'm not scared to move anywhere in the world. I'm not scared to change anything. Feeling uncomfortable in situations like such as moving overseas helps you grow and like show show yourself who you really are. Because at the start you're solo, you're by yourself. You got to go like start making them connections and see who you are really as a person and really live up to the opportunity. And who knows, you might stay over here. You just don't know. Just follow your dreams. My name is Natalie Garcia. I'm from Puerto Rico, and this is my fifth year, but I'm a senior, basically. I'm here to play volleyball and also to get a major in communication design. That was my main goal when I was in Puerto Rico. I always told my parents that I wanted to come to US to study and also play volleyball to just have like a different experience. Um, like I wanted to learn like English, um, play volleyball. I feel like volleyball in the in division one is like harder than, I'm not saying that in Puerto Rico, the level is bad, but I feel like here it's pretty like, um, it's just a little bit harder and just I just wanted to like make our, or get stronger at my skills. Hi, I'm Natalie Garcia. I'm part of the volleyball team and currently it's like 5.50 a.m. and we're here to go to workouts.
So now we're done with workout and now we have open gym at Davis. I'm just trying to enjoy every moment. I'm just trying to like uh, spend time with everybody. I'm trying to um, do better, be supportive. So we just got done with opening and now we're gonna do rehab at Ventura. So this is electrical so stimulation so that helps with pain control and, and helps get her warm and ready to do her exercises. Now I usually watch TikTok while the time passes. She's really goofy. I feel like on the court, people wouldn't see that, obviously. But um, yeah, she's really funny. She's really sarcastic. Um, yeah, she's a great person to be around. She cares for everyone around her. Um, she always checks in, making sure like how I'm doing, how Avery's doing, and. Yeah, she's just really great to be around. So now we're done with rehab and now I'm going to class. And I'm going to take her. Yeah. So now we're here. This is like the art building or like a studio building. And I'm taking um, studio painting this summer and it's like a four hour class. So this is my studio for like my temporary studio for the summer. Well, I mean, she's a kind person and a considerate person. And, uh, and you know, that, that's important. It, it adds a lot to the team chemistry. Um, I think that, uh, you know, she's incredibly talented, as you mentioned, with her art. I, I discovered that last year in, in just walking to class with her and looking at some of her projects there. And I was shocked at really how talented she is in that regard as well. But she's a, she's a well-rounded person that I think is going to be highly successful at what she chooses to, to do in her life. Well, after a day of training or practice or whatever, or classes, I usually come back home and make some food. And today I'm gonna make something that is, um, I don't think, I mean, it's pretty like traditional in Puerto Rico. It's kind of like basic, but yeah. It's rice, white rice, um, beans, we pork chop, and plantains. They look like a banana, but they're not. Well, I feel like it's really special when I make like something from home because I can like, like I'm not that good at it. So I have to call some of my family, for example, my mom or my grandma. So I usually call them and I have a conversation with them while I make the food. So I feel like it's really, really special having that bonding from far.
want to play professional in Puerto Rico. I just want to have the experience and, you know, like have my family, my games. And yeah, probably also work there. But I liked the life in the United States too. Hi, that's it for game day. That's what a game day looks like. And also that's a wrap for a day in the life of Natalie Garcia. Um, go dogs. Bye. Graham Orr, head women's soccer coach at SIU. Originally from Glasgow, Scotland. I was the head soccer coach at the University of West Alabama. If you lose it as a two, you've got to work hard to get the Well, I was very fortunate to be, you know, one of the first ones to come over with a company called First Point UK. Uh, there's a lot of boys that come from Glasgow uh, to do a soccer scholarship. Andrew Keane, the head of that department, you know, set up a scholarship agency. So um, it was the kind of thing to do around about 2003. And I was fortunate to go to a school called Martin Methodist. Uh, and it was really the best decision of my life. Uh, when I finished playing in Scotland, I was working with my local council and the SFA to do my qualifications. And then when I finished playing in America, obviously I'd had a lot of experience. Uh, and then I kind of fell upon the, the women's college scene and never looked back. Morning, Dom. Welcome to SIU soccer, early start. First things first, let's get this kettle on. Get a wee cup of tea, so we're ready to go. In the office. Check the emails, see who's been trying to contact me through the evening. Make sure I keep up with my correspondence. Get together as a staff, try plan the practice, think of you know what we've seen from last night and the previous days and how we could try to um, to engage the kids this morning. Quarter past seven, raining, <laughs> lovely day outside, so now we go up to try and get set up for practice. Five Friday morning, day four pre-season, about to uh, start practice. Right, so we've got a few things to get through. All right, now put a little bit more weight on the pass. A little bit short, long. Let's go. Short, short, long. Let's go. Play the ball over. You shout out a number of touches you have to take. So if I have the ball here and I played the ball to Bert, I would say two. The things that I've enjoyed about working with Coach, uh, he makes things lighthearted, and that's pretty important when it comes to the field. Um, he also likes to dig deep into your personality and finding things that the majority of people want to see about you. Something I've taken away from having coach as a first year head coach um, is accepting things with open arms. Um, definitely learning new cultures and new barriers. Um, that's been a tough one this season, but learning to adapt and learning to um, overcome those differences has been a good life lesson and something that we could take into the future. Okay, so that's us just finished our, our kind of walk through and our our uh, due diligence to play tonight. As you can see, it's now dried up. It's nice, gonna be a nice day. And next we will recover, go to lunch, and uh, our assistants will lead some video review of what we've done this week into tonight's game. So I will see you around about 12. I've known Coach Orr for about two and a half years now. I played with him over at West Alabama, and he recruited me to come here at SIU. Working with Coach over these years has really helped me build my confidence and my mentality. He's someone that really pushes you to go above and beyond. 
of what you really set yourself to. He doesn't want you to settle for your expectations because you know you can do more than what you think you actually can do. And it helps me build as a person on the field and off the field. <laughs> Energy for the girls right there, mate. Yeah. Do we have a box? The box. Hey, well, mate. Hey, Hello, give it. Lad. At five in the morning. Five in the office. Same day. You think deep today because you put a lot of lines on your legs the other night, but this is a squad, you're going to have to dig deep. Uh, and that five is attacking, you're going to have to get into the last time you need to be ready for what you need. Thanks very much, appreciate the trip. No problem. Top driver all the way from Wales. You know the best thing to come out of Wales? No, the train to Scotland. Ah, nah, that was, that's too far, eh? That's too far. But thanks, we'll see you again soon, alright? Okay. Thank you. So, so now we just recover, we pack away all the stuff and we get ready for the next game. So, see you there, Dom. <laughs>